Hello again and welcome back. My name is Michael Fudge. This is lesson 18 in our Learn to Program in Java series. In this lesson, we'll cover GUI programming. On the agenda for today, we'll talk about the Java Swing Toolkit, the common UI widgets you can use with the toolkit and what their purposes might be, and then I want you to note that everything that you do when you type input, etc., is a string, and so we have to revisit converting strings to other types like integers and doubles and Boolean values. First of all, I know many of you are familiar with a graphical user interface or GUI, and up until this point, we haven't been doing any Java programming in a GUI. And you might be asking yourself, well, why haven't we started to use the GUI from the beginning? And really the answer to that is, in order to learn to program, you don't need to use a GUI. GUIs are things that you can pick up afterwards. Another important thing to note is that the nature and behaviors of the various GUI toolkits that are available change over time. Some go out of fashion, some new ones come in fashion. So the better thing to do is to learn how to be a good problem solver and learn how to program and then you'll be able to pick up just about any GUI toolkit that becomes in vogue when you learn how to program. In this course, we'll be using the Java Swing GUI. This is the standard Java GUI toolkit right now. There used to be other Java toolkit GUIs in earlier editions like AWT. We won't be using those, we'll be using Swing. The way Swing works is the code executes in response to a user event like clicking a button or typing text. So in other words, there's going to be a main event loop and it's going to just kind of wait until you do something and then in response to doing something we'll execute code. This is unlike what we've written before where the code executes when you hit the run button. There's still code being executed I want to emphasize. It's just the code that you end up writing is usually going to be in response to an event in the user interface. For, for instance, clicking a button. Let's first talk about some of the common classes that are available to you through the Swing Toolkit. Uh, JFrame is the most common class. This one makes the window. JLabel displays text. JButton is for a button. JTextField is for a box where you can enter text. JCheckbox uh, makes a uh, checkbox for yes, no. JComboBox is a drop down list. And then there's common methods. You need get text to read the value of the control, set text to set the value of the control, and is selected is a method you can call to determine whether or not a control was selected. Lay, uh, this is useful for J checkboxes or J combo boxes, for example. Okay, I'd like to start by running a demo just so you can see what the GUI's like. I'll, I'll talk over the various swing controls I have and then after I run the demo I, I'll show you how I built the demo because building a swing project is much different than all, some of the other things we've done to date. Okay here I am in my NetBeans IDE and I've opened up this example called demo swing controls that I wrote. This is uh, available with the lesson on GitHub and you'll see I have one Java file called demo swing controls JFrame. And what you'll notice about this Java file when I open it up is you don't see any code. What you see instead of seeing a code is a, GU a GUI form. And on my form I have objects of certain classes that you can see. I've clicked on this box here. That's a J checkbox called Eat at Joe's. J checkbox Eat at Joe's. And it's got various properties on it, like colors, and one of the text the text properties has eat at Joe's. I have a this down here is a J text field, and it's J text field message is the name of the object. The class is J text field, and the text is blank. I could have the text say monkey if I want. It'll display monkey in there. What's different about what we've done so far is we now have these graphical widgets that we include on a on a page and then th that in turn th those ge those graphical widgets generate code for us if i click to the source tab you'll see something that looks a little more familiar you'll see my package in my class and a public method this public method here is a constructor and the constructor calls init components 
And then down here are all the private members of the objects that I have on my GUI form. And then here's a bunch of plumbing code that is it was created. And what's interesting is this is code that I wrote, J button action perform. So when you click the, the Java button, I'm going to do uh, this stuff here. So you can see everything is still here the same way it was before. It's just there's a little bit of extra stuff that was created for me. And this is this is pretty much a good thing because one of the nice things if, about building a graphical user interface is you want to be able to use tooling like this to make sure that you place your objects in the right place and uh, you can see kind of what's going to happen when you run run your program before you run your program. So if you look at this layout that I have here, when I actually run my program up here, the layout that I get on at runtime is is very similar to the one that I get at design time and this again is a good thing that when you're building your user interface up here in NetBeans you don't have to constantly run it to make sure that you're doing it correctly now this is a very simple demo here that just kind of iterates how you can get properties out of each control so I'm just gonna check a bunch of things and do a bunch of things in here you know pick a combo box value type in my name I'm gonna hit click me and then it's gonna read the values out of the controls see that so if I switch these around right the values will change and this kinda of gives me a sense of how I can use these controls in a program like a checkbox is great for yes no values and radio buttons are good for letting someone pick amongst a choice same thing with a combo box is a little more compact text box is for freeform text and then click me is my event handler and if I were to look at the code that's associated with the click me event handler you'll see that I'm just doing a bunch of property setting it says uh, you know for example the text box value I call the set text method and I set it to I set this label I set it to what I get from the text field as the value with get text so probably the best way to explain uh, how this is is working is for me to you know what I'm gonna do at this point put a breakpoint here debug it Okay, you see the code ran, but it has not hit my breakpoint yet. The breakpoint is not going to be hit until I until I click this button here because that is what this method is associated with is the event of clicking a button. So let me just set a couple of values here first. Then I'll hit the button. Then we'll fall into this area here. Let me see if I can get them to both line up at the same time. I'll just leave it here. Okay. So this line says I want to set the text of label message value, which is right here, to label message, which is this, get the text. So I'm going to hit F8, and then I'm going to set the text of the checkbox, etc., etc. And then I'm going to do the radio buttons. And then when the event handler is done, the form gets repainted and... I see the values. So you won't see those values in real time as you're debugging, but you can at least inspect the object's values. For example, let me click it again. And so if I put a watch on this, let me put a watch on this one here. You'll see that that is Mike. See that right there? And if I go back and look at my form, uh, that's what I typed, Mike. So you can see that you have to use the set text and get text methods to read and write to and from these user interface controls. That's really the big secret. Okay, next we're going to get real world and we're going to make a program from scratch that asks us for the length and width of a rectangle and then we'll calculate that rectangles area and perimeter we have written this program before what we didn't do is write it swing style so we will write it now as a graphical user interface program what you want to notice here is that um, I everything is a string so even though I type in a length of 15.5 
that gets input as a string and it is up to me to convert that value into a double so that I can perform math. These are kind of the things that we'll, we'll see as we go through the demo. Let's get into it. Okay, I'm back in NetBeans, and I think the first thing I want to do is take you through how to build one of these types of GUI projects from scratch. So I'm going to do something we haven't done in a while. I'm going to do a new project. Usually I skip this part because I figure you know how to do it. I'm going to pick Java application here, and I'm going to call this Rectangle Redux. And this is not unlike anything we've done before. And you see I have this rectangle Redux Java. What I, what I want to do instead is I want to uh, make a new JFrame form. And, I, and I'm going to call this rectangle Redux JFrame. And I don't need this other one, so I can delete that. And now when I execute my program, it asks me, well, what is going to be your startup project? And there's only one class left, so you want to select that class. And now I get my blank slate where I can make my awesome GUI. So let's start by setting some properties that, that get us close to what we want to do here. All right, first I'm going to set the title. Let's call it Area and Perimeter of Rectangle. Okay, well I've done uh, quite a bit of setup already. I haven't completed all the setup, but I've done enough so that you don't have to watch and be bored uh, in the process. What I've done is I've labeled all my labels, right, and I've just set the text properties of each of the labels. And then I've taken, and all, for each of my text boxes here, I've just given them a value of 0.0, .0 to start. And I went through and started naming some of these. Like, for example, this text box here is called J Text Field Length. This one here is called J text field width. Rather than keeping them, you know, J text field one, J text field two, J text field three, I like to give them names that make sense so that I'm coding. I know which one I'm referring to. I labeled this button J button calculate. And now I need to label these last two. So I'm going to label this one J text field area. and this one J text field perimeter looking good now what I need to do is write the code that actually you know takes the values in here and then when I click this calculate button we'll figure out the area and perimeter so I have to tie code to this button if I do that by double clicking on the button it will take me in to a method that it will generate for me that uh, is associated with the J button calculate action performed method which means the button carries out its action that is you click on it and it does what it intends so let's set this up I should use variables here I should have double uh, area perimeter length and width I'm going to need four variables. Now, the, the general rule of thumb here, the pattern I'm going to follow, is I need to take the value out of the text box, and I need to put it in a variable. Then I need to calculate my area and perimeter, and then stick them back on the text boxes. The problem that we face is that the text box, what I type in here is a string. It is not a double. Yeah, I might type a double in there, but it still gets treated as a string. So I have to write the code that will convert the string into the double. That's all on me. So you probably don't remember how to do this because it's been a while, so I'll walk you through it again. But I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to say length is this dot j text field length dot get text. That gets the length. So if I type in a length of 14.0, this method will get that 
length. The problem is it's a string and I need a double so I need to use double dot parse double which takes a string as an argument and then returns the double equivalent of that string. So again double dot parse double takes your string converts it to a double. Taking the double and converting it to the, to the string is actually quite simple as we'll see and you already know how to do that as well. So I need to repeat this for width. This is one of the kind of the disadvantages of using a GUI is that everything is treated as a string and it's up to you to kind of plumb it out of a string and into the native type that you need. This is a royal pain in the butt and one of the things that people do not like about um, languages that use data types. This would be J text field width, right? Oh, I forgot width. Area is length times width. Perimeter is two times length plus width. I called it perm. Now, how do I take area and perimeter and get them back onto the text form? Back into the text boxes on my form, I should say. I need to say something like this dot area. And now I'm going to use the set text method. And you'll see that set text takes one argument of type string. So I need to put a string in here. So there's a couple ways I could do this. I could just say, I can't just say area because area is a double and it's looking for a string. So I have to convert this to a string. So you would use the string, string dot format. And if you don't remember, string dot format is the same as saying system dot out dot printf. Same kind of syntax. So string format format it as a double. What do we want to format? Area. And I will rinse and repeat this pattern for perimeter using of course J text field perimeter. And then using perm here. And that is it. That is all my code. So let's give it a run and see what happens. Alright, enter a length, four, enter a width, 6.2, calculate. Oh, looks like I don't have enough room. See, 20.4000000 area is 24.8000000. So it looks like I didn't leave myself enough uh, room. I need to make these text boxes a little wider. That's one way to, to tackle this problem. Another way would be to change my string dot format to use a fewer number of decimal places. I could do that as well. could probably do both just so that it doesn't look so wacky. So I'm going to say, let me say like 0.2f and then 0.2f. So I'll use two decimal places. That should be sufficient. Let's give that a try. Enter length 2.5, enter width 4, calculate 10 and 13. There you go. Now two things kind of bug me about this program. One is uh, I would I, I don't like the fact that when I run the program initially, I have to edit these zeros. See that I you know I got to take those out and put in a six or something. I should just you know start with blanks, and I should also have a button that lets me reset everything back to the way it was. So let's uh, let's write that now. 
since I want when the form first loads it to clear the values and then I want to have a button on here that says clear values right I'm going to take this calculate move it over and then I'm going to add another button and I'm going to call this button J button let's call it clear values and then I want to name this J button clear values and I'll get to what I'm talking about in a second if I were to just double click on this and write code here clear values action performed then if I write the code here it will clear the values out but then how do I get that to happen at startup let me let me just show you what I mean so let's suppose I say this j area dot set text string dot format percent point two f and I want it to be zero so when you hit the clear button I want the area to be zero I want the perimeter to be zero I want the area or not the area I'm sorry I want the length I want to set that text to empty that way you don't have to type anything and I want to do the same for width so let's run that now so now when I hit clear values Oop, did I screw something up? It looks like I threw an exception down here. I did. Okay. Oh, uh, string format 0.2f, and I'm putting in, it's not a double. Put in a double. Let's try that again. Okay. So, see, when I hit clear values, and then I can put in a you know, 4 and a 3, calculate. Yes, clear values, back the way it was. Okay, what I need to do now is I want when it opens up for the first time it to run the clear values method. Okay, so if you look up here, this is the constructor, and the constructor has um, when it first. This is what happens when the when the program first runs. It runs the constructor. So I could take all this code here and just copy and paste it into the constructor, but what I'd rather do is make a, a private method just for this. So I'm going to cut this out, and I'm going to make a private method called clear form. So I'm writing my own method, and my, my clear form method is going to do this, because that's how I want my form cleared. And then when you click this button, I'm going to call clear form. I guess if I want to be consistent with all the programming I've done to date, I should do this clear form. And of course, when I'm up here in the constructor, after I initialize all the components, I want to call this clear form. And now when I run it, it should clear the form when it first starts, and it did. And then I can put in a 3 and a 5.5. .5. Calculate. Awesome. Clear values. Well, that concludes our lesson on GUI programming with the Swing Toolkit. I hope you learned a little bit more about how it all works and you feel more comfortable with it. It's not that bad, actually. We'll continue to write more GUI programs in the last two lessons. In the meantime, I welcome your questions and comments on this particular lesson. Thank you very much, and we'll see you again real soon. Bye now.